So today I'm here with Mike from the Media Manufacturers Association. Hi Mike, nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. Now a lot of people use already MIDI devices out there and MIDI is the standard since ever. And now there's MIDI 2.0 for the past years actually in the yeah. ears. But still a lot of people don't know what is MIDI 2.0 all about and maybe you tell us a little bit about the association as well. Okay, well the MIDI Manufacturers Association publishes the MIDI specifications. and. Uh, so MIDI is now 37 years wow. old. It's about time for an update, right? That sounds of good. Of course, we've added a lot of features to MIDI 1.0 in 37 years. Okay. Uh, but we kind of came to the end of what we could do with MIDI 1.0. Okay. So MIDI 2.0 is the next step. And really, it's just more MIDI. We yep. use the same ideas, same concepts still exist. Yep. And backwards compatibility was a big key on how we designed it. Makes sense. Yeah. So it's more MIDI. And, awesome. Uh, there's three areas of expansion um, enabled by something we call yeah. MIDI capability inquiry. Now MIDI's uh, a monologue. I send you information, you receive it, and you do something with it. MIDI 2.0, we, we require a two-way communication. So now I ask you, who are you? What do you do? Can you do the new things? Can you do MIDI 2.0? If you don't answer, I just continue to use MIDI 1.0. But if you answer, you tell me what you could do. So you might do profile configuration, or property exchange, or protocol negotiation. We call those the three Ps. Okay. So profiles, I'll give you just a quick example. Please. Profiles uh, define how a device should work so that it works with other devices that are similar. So take an example of a drawbar organ. It has nine drawbars on it, and there are many drawbar organ plugins and hardware and so on available today. They all use different controllers for the drawbars. Right. So you have to manually go and map them if you want them to be compatible. Okay. But with a profile, every device that says, I belong to the organ profile, uses the same defined controllers for the drawbars. It's kind of a bit like General MIDI was, except yeah. it's a two-way communication, communication now. And so you can confirm, do you support the organ profile? And if you do, I'm going to automatically map to you. So the piano profile, organ profile, electric piano profile, drum profile, etc. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So these are these kind of macros that set up a device to work in a standardized way. So if I'm using a controller keyboard, all the sliders on my keyboard will auto map for me. I don't have to do mapping anymore. Awesome. Okay. Depending on what profile is running in the plugin that I have. That's great. And that happens okay. because of this two-way communication. So you're not yes, just exactly. receiving, you're sending data. You as confirm well back what and forth. profiles do you understand yeah. and turn them on or off. Awesome. So that's profiles. Yeah. Property exchange allows me to dig deeper into the instrument uh, using JSON inside of system exclusive messages. I could do queries of a device. So it's actually a get and set mechanism. And so I can ask, one device can ask another device. What MIDI channel are you on? Or um, do you have local on or local off? And I can set it. And so it also allows uh, a, a much more intelligent auto configuration of very deep details in a device. I can also ask you for a list of all your programs and get that as a text, uh, uh, including categories and meta tags wow. and so on. And so. Um, uh, property exchange allows exchange of really any kind of information about the, the device, even downloading a file or an editor from the device directly into the DAW. So I don't have to install a new software to get an editor. Okay. I can get ask for the editor from the device when it gets plugged into the DAW. Wow. So these are the, the ease of use and auto configuration that come from profile configuration and property exchange. Now the other area that we have expansion is the protocol itself. We're extending the MIDI messages to do new, th new things and have better musical expression. Okay. So, we've <coughs> excuse me, yeah. uh, a note on in MIDI 1.0 has a note number yeah. and a velocity uh, with 127 that steps, sense. right? That's exactly. Okay? And that. so I play, I play note number 60 with a certain yeah. velocity. Okay. The new note number in MIDI 2.0 is the same, except I have 16-bit velocity. Wow. And then I have uh, what we call an, an attribute field where I can put other data in there. So I can put precise pitch. So I'm no longer inputting play note number 60. I want to okay. play a note with a very specific pitch. Yeah. 
or articulation data. This is great for, for composers working with orchestral scores. Absolutely. I can put in the Absolutely. note on whether this note is supposed to be pizzicato or arco or tremolo, uh, muted, and so on. So articulation data can be embedded right in the note on as well. Um, Awesome. Now the 16-bit steps, how many steps do you get now instead of the 127? What's the max out there? Um, well, controllers yeah. go from being 0 to, to 127, 127. Yeah. to 0 to 4 billion. Wow. So you Incredible really can go resolution. into the finest detail now with MIDI exactly, yes. Now, I think a lot of people use different DOS and they use different software. Now, yep. one of the main questions that I always had is, how do you know, first of all, your DAW supports MIDI 2.0? Does do they support it right now? And what about the plugins and things? And how can you actually validate this is actually MIDI 2.0? Or is it still in development and not been implemented? What's the status actually for, okay. for these two things, which are important things that we, for all our audience out there? Right. Because they don't know really, am I using MIDI 2.0 right now? Or does my DAW even support it? Or should I upgrade to a different DAW? Or uh, does the music yes, virtual right. instrument or, right. or library right. support that? Right. So, We've spent many years getting to MIDI 2.0. Okay. And in fact, we're just finishing the spec. We'll be voting on it tomorrow. Okay. Oh, just awesome. Tomorrow. Okay, so tomorrow is the vote. Yeah. Sunday is the big yeah. day, the last yeah. day of the NAM. Yes. Does it happen here at the NAM with a, with a board? Yes, the MIDI Manufacturers Association annual general meeting will be tomorrow morning. Oh, and we'll awesome. vote to adopt the final specifications that make up uh, the, the foundation of MIDI 2.0. That's awesome. That, now manufacturers can start to implement. Okay. okay. In fact, Roland already announced a MIDI 2.0 ready keyboard. Okay. Here at the NAMM show, they're showing that. Yeah. But it's not really MIDI 2.0 oh, no. until it connects to another MIDI 2.0 device. So for right? everyone out there today, there's no device that supports MIDI 2.0. Really, Roland has something under labels, but it's decided tomorrow what are the final specs, and <laughs> right. then we can look right. next year, the next NAMM probably, right. or maybe even in right. summer, if right. there's already gear out there so, that uh, is it. And that will include also that support for the DOS, for every right. individually. So we, we need the operating system companies to add support, yeah. and uh, we need DAWs to add support, and we need uh, other manufacturers to build yeah. products that support MIDI 2.0. Yeah. There will be a new logo. You can look for devices okay. that have the new logo, and that will confirm. Um, so um, today is where we start. Now, okay. All the largest manufacturers of MIDI devices yeah. have been involved in this. Yeah. That's so this what I imagine. It takes a huge amount of work. Yeah. So okay. this doesn't come as a surprise, okay. but developing the new core technology Gee. does take yeah. some time. Some time to develop. So I would expect the first products in MIDI 2.0 to start trickling out through this next year. Next year. That's exactly what it was. It's been an exciting year for yeah, everyone. Year from, of us. Na from now at the NAM show, you'll probably see really the establishment of MIDI 2.0 oh. is, is starting to really awesome. take shape yeah. where people. Yeah people can, can use it. But in the meantime, MIDI 1.0 is just fine and it will work with the new systems as well. So it's soundwards compatible, you heard it. One of the questions that I got just in my mind is, will this be, pu be public, the specs that you decide tomorrow on, so people know already what to expect and what is possible basically to implement, even for developers and yes. software developers out there who might watch this right now and want to know, uh, this is something feature that is, is actually part of MIDI 2.0. Will this be released after this or what's, what's the schedule for that? For MIDI remains free, yeah. so uh, it's always been free, which is one of the great values of MIDI. Nobody's trying to sell it to you. Anybody can awesome. use it. Awesome. We right? love that. We love and, that. And we continue the same way. So we will be publishing okay. the specifications. We'll vote tomorrow. There's some editorial uh, and procedures to do uh, for copyright and so on, but we'll release it soon. I imagine within several weeks, the specification will be on our website at midi.org. That's awesome. And now, one other thing I have a question. Yes. <laughs> There's so much out. One of the things that we do a lot of developers also, we support them, we consult them, we help yep. them also. Now, one of the things is, do you also support them along their way to implement MIDI 2.0 in their standards? Do you have a team yes. of experts and how will that actually work within the next year? Any software developers, hardware developers out there, that might be something interesting for them. Right, so the MIDI Manufacturers Association is a membership of people who build MIDI products. And uh, so it's a volunteer organization. Uh, so we don't have staff to support 
but it's a great community of manufacturers. A MIDI, that's, that's really the heart of MIDI is everybody agrees awesome. to work together anyway, yeah. right? It's, it's basically yeah. a network yeah. where all the manufacturers and people right. in development come together yes. and they, yeah. they, they define yeah. the specs and right. based on that, they have standards on how to implement right. that and the coding yes. and all the things yes. you don't see yes. as a user, yes. but you'll basically have right. the possibility. But okay, so if you're interested in, if you're a developer, if you develop hardware, if you develop software, look also at the website. We have it on the screen as well. Yeah. I'd like to point out that, that we do have a GitHub, so we have tools that you can download. Awesome. And, oh, and source code that you can download to help jumpstart. And this is shared from this community of awesome. manufacturers. So if you're a manufacturer, join the MIDI Manufacturers Association. If you're a composer, a musician, join the MIDI Association. That's free. Go to MIDI.org, free. sign awesome. up, and then you can download all the specifications awesome. and uh, tutorials and that kind of thing that are to come. Thank you so much. Mike, I think that answers a lot of questions that users Great. have, developers have, and anyone who's just enjoying MIDI. Great. <laughs> I appreciate it. No, thank you for Happy now. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, MIDI 2.